Coming up in this month's City Scene, we're going to preview the 2018 road construction season and focus on how hands-only CPR can really improve an individual's chance at life. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Wellman and welcome to February City Scene. Up first is Shannon Austin filling us in on 2018 road construction season. Hi Sioux Falls, Shannon Austin here with Public Works Engineering and guess what? Construction season is right around the corner. We want to make sure you are prepared for this season, and so we want to give you a brief update on what we have coming for you. We welcome to the show John Osmond. John, welcome. Thank you. You are a project manager of a couple of our biggest projects for the summer. We're going to start off with the Ellis Road project from 41st Street uh, going north to about 12th Street. 1,500 feet short. Okay, so we're not going fully into 12th Street. Uh, not with new pavement. We'll, okay. have, we'll have some transitional work right short of 12th Street. Okay, so just generally, what is what is the scope of this very large project? It consists of removing a rural section two-lane uh, road and reconstructing it into four lanes of concrete with a raised median, traffic signals, street lights, uh, some water main, underground utility work, uh, and then one unique thing about it is we're going to have a, a uh, path, a walk, an eight-foot path along the Hmm. each side. So that's really different from what it is today because like as you said it's a two-lane rural section which means it has it's basically an old county highway it's paved but it does have the ditches that are in people's backyards. Correct. Okay and I know that in the past for those of those for the folks that are on the west side traveling down the Ellis Road in the past has been kind of like a roller coaster ride. Will that be fixed with the project? Uh, yeah the 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 pavement will will be a smoother ride to begin with, which will help, and then we will bring it up to design standards, and and uh, it'll it'll ride much nicer. Okay, so our you said we're putting in signals. Can you identify the locations approximately that we're going to put those signals at? Twenty uh, sixth Street, uh, for sure, is okay. getting signals. Um, then we will stub out for future at the other major intersections. Okay. So we'll have the underground ready when they're up to count. So what's the overall? Um, cost estimate for the project? 11 million. Wow, that's a big project. That's got to be our biggest one for the season, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay. So, and when do we start that? When do we anticipate that to start? Uh, I'd like March 17th because I'm <laughs> Irish, but uh, I think a more realistic would be uh, beginning of April. Okay. So, what are the detours associated? Because I'm assuming with that rural section, you'll have to totally close off sections at right. a time. It's, it's actually going to be constructed as a, a full closure, and okay. then we will have connectivity from east to west at various locations during the project. And then detour will, traffic will detour around uh, along Sertoma. Okay, so the whole actual corridor will be closed all at one time? Pretty much, yes. And is it a one year project? No, it's two years. Okay. We will get the pavement open by November and then we will do some finish up, clean up work next year. Okay. So our next project then is Madison Street from Louise to the Big Sioux River and then also Louise from Madison Street North. Can you briefly describe the impacts to our drivers for that project? That will also be constructed as a full closure. Uh, it'll be a very uh, quick closure as far as on Madison okay. because of the fair. We want to get things open in time for the fair. Great. So not a huge impact, but certainly an impact for those commuters. Correct. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Our next update, we're going to talk to Dina Knudsen from our also City of Sioux Falls project manager. Dina, you have a project on 85th Street from Louise over to Hughes, which is on the total southwest part of the city. Can you give our viewers an update on what's going on there? Uh, sure. Uh, the project will bid here at the end of February, and um, it's r roughly right now about $3.5 million. Okay. Um, we'll be putting a, a signal at the intersection of Hughes and the signal at the intersection of Louise and 93rd Street. Okay. Um, the road will be under a complete closure during construction, but being that it's a fairly short distance, it shouldn't. It, it won't be a complete summer project. We're we're estimating to probably be about three to four months. Wow. Okay. So similar to John's project with these rural section roads with the two lanes and and ditches, it's really going to look different out there once the project is done. Correct. What are we going to be building? 
we'll be building. It'll be a, a raised median okay. uh, with two 11-foot lanes in each direction, so four okay. lanes total. So a lot like Louise Avenue that exists out there today. Yes, correct. Okay. And that segment or that kind of street will be extended then all the way over to Tallgrass eventually? Eventually in the okay. future, yeah. And then it'll ultimately lead to the overpass at 85th Street. Um, okay. But more studies will be happening with that. Um, the, the environmental assessment will be completed for the the overpass, okay. but then more more discussion will be happening with the interchange. So really there's a lot of work going on in that little area for the next three or four years. It will change a lot, okay. yes. All right, well then we're going to go over to the east side, which is a project that we've talked about numerous times on City Scene, 26th and Southeastern. So for our drivers who haven't been on 26th Street near Rotary Park recently, if they drive by now they're really going to see a lot of change. What, tell us what's been going on out there. Well, the street department, uh, City of Sioux Falls Street Department, helped us out with removing all of the trees that we needed to within the new Rotary Park, which will be on the, the uh, west side of the okay. river. Um, that will be the home to the new Rotary Park. Um, that project bids uh, at the end of February. Um, that will be a good chunk of the summer. Not a huge impact to the public, definitely not the driving public because mm -hmm. it will be off the street, but um, there'll be a little bit of impact on the bike trail on the on the east side of the river, um, but we'll have a detour in place so so people will be able to get around there. So it looks really different though, doesn't it? And it you, does. When you drive by, it's like, oh, you can see quite a bit more now. It then. does. <laughs> it does. And so what did we do with all that wood again? Um, the street department, they took it um, to the, some of it went to the penitentiary, okay. um, and then some of it went to um, uh, to be recycled at okay. the at the pellet place. Okay, so the, it's went to good went to a good home. Yes, correct. And then give us a quick overview of when the project, the 26th Street and Southeastern project, will be bid and under construction. Uh, that project will be bid October uh, of this year. Oh, it's already coming here. It yeah. is. <laughs> it is. It's coming fast. And then that will be a two-year construction project in 19 and 20. And that will impact our drivers. That will be a very big okay. impact. But to what's the highlight? The 26th Street will remain open to traffic. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yep, it'll it'll be flopped through the different phases, but yeah, it, there will be a portion remaining. Well, viewers, for more information on all these projects that we've talked about today, go to the City of Sioux Falls' website at SiouxFalls.org under Engineering and then also under Upcoming Street Construction. We'll have project newsletters as well as an interactive street map to help you guide you in your travels. Thanks for watching. Folks, did you know that hands-only CPR can really improve a person's chance at life? Here's Sioux Falls Fire Rescue to explain what I mean. Hi, this is Division Chief Steve Fessler with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And today I'm with Jeremy Robertson, our, one of our EMS educators. And it is American Heart Month. So one of the things we want to talk about is hands-only CPR. Yep, that is correct. It's February's Heart Month, so we're going to teach somebody in about 30 seconds how to save somebody's life. Okay, and as we said, February is heart month, and car, um, heart disease is the number one killer of Americans nationwide. And approximately 390,000 people every year die from what's called sudden cardiac arrest. So what we're gonna show you how to do is to save somebody's life in four easy steps with hands-only CPR. So how this works is that if you see somebody collapse in front of you, or you see somebody that's laying in a weird spot on the floor, the very first thing you wanna do is look them over, check for response, shake and shout, see if you can wake them up. If they do not respond, they've probably suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. So send somebody to call 911 or with your cell phone, dial 911, hit speaker, and you can talk to the dispatcher over the phone. Step number three is we just want to take a look at the person. If they're not breathing or they're not breathing normally or only gasping, they have suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. So act fast, one palm right in the center of the chest, the other hand right over the top of it, and we're gonna push up and down hard and fast. Two inches deep, 100 times a minute. And you can use the, th the song, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, to keep you at that pace. Remember, it's better to have a cracked rib than to, for him to kick the bucket. Wait till help arrives and they will take over for you. This is how, in four easy steps, you can save somebody's life. Boy, that is a simple, easy two-step process. Um, We'd like to know a little bit more about uh, where we, who, who or what we can contact for 
additional CPR classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you need CPR certification for work or for your job, one of the things we offer is that you can do the class online through the American Heart Association, mm -hmm. and then we offer free skills testing once a month uh, here at, at uh, Fire Headquarters. And we also do hands-only classes, which are free of charge, and we set those up with a conversation with me of what works best for your schedule, what works in my schedule, and what we do like to have a minimum of about 10 people to come out and do one of those classes. So you can certainly contact me at Sioux Falls Fire, 605-367-8271, or go to Sioux Falls Fire website for more information, and that's uh, SiouxFalls.org backslash fire. Up next is Jessica Sexy, and she's going to share some really important information on conservation. Hi, Jessica. Tell us what you do. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm Jessica Sexy. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Sioux Falls. Okay. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about water conservation and how people can conserve water in their home. Critical. Very yes. critical. So we are in a kitchen right now. Yeah. Is there some special tips about the place behind you? So in your kitchen sink, there's a lot of ways that you can conserve water, uh, starting with how you wash your dishes. So okay. if you choose to hand wash your dishes, you don't need to keep the water running. Uh, we like to have... Yeah, it's it can it's be It's got to get warm. I know, right? You want to let the temperature warm up. But once it warms up, just fill up your sink, plug it, have one of your sinks full of the dishwashing uh, solution with your dishwashing okay. soap. The other one can be your, your rinsing station. So you've got the soapy side and then the, the rinsing side. That way you can turn the water off, save water. You'll wash it in the soapy side, rinse it, give it a quick dip in the water solution, and then just let it dry. Let it air dry. Yep. Okay. What about people, because I'm guilty of this too, who run their water for their garbage disposal? That's a good question. Yeah. So that is one way that you can use a lot of water too. So, yeah. That's so bad. <laughs> That's okay. But you know what you can do? Uh, take your vegetable scraps, you know, your vegetable peels or fruit uh, scraps, things like that, anything organic um, that's not a meat product. Uh, you can take that and compost it instead of putting it down your dishwasher disposal. So you can save water that way too. Okay. Now in the wintertime, where do we compost? How do we do that? So you can still compost in the wintertime as long as you take care of your compost bin. Uh, the compost itself will, will heat up naturally. You just need to make sure that you turn it and keep it in a sunny spot, keep it maintained. Okay, so maybe right outside your back door. Right, exactly. Right outside your back door. I did not know that it heated up all by itself. Yeah, it's really interesting. You can see it even steaming in the winter. I'm a little horrified <laughs> yeah. and uh, intrigued by that information. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we talked about... Washing your dishes, is it okay to use a dishwasher? Is that Are there certain settings that you should look for? Yeah, so interestingly enough, you're probably going to save more water if you do use your dishwasher. That's crazy. Yeah, they're, they're designed to be more water efficient these days, especially if you have a newer model. Just okay. make sure that you fill it all the way full before you run it. Okay, so none of those little mini ones, those little mini light settings that the newer ones have. Right, right. You want to fill it all the way because you know your dishwasher can't sense you know if there's only a half <laughs> load in, so it's going to use the same amount of water no matter what. So okay. put everything in there that you can before you run it. Okay, we've talked about the kitchen. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit maybe about the bathroom. Sure. So there's a lot of great ways that you can save water in your bathroom, uh, starting with your shower. Uh, take a look at your shower head. Uh, we have free low flow shower heads available with the city of Sioux Falls you can pick up, really easy to install, and they'll help you lose less water while you are showering. Where do folks go to get those? The utility billing office where you pay your water bill, also City Hall at the uh, Public Works Administration building. I learned so much. Today. Yeah, yeah. There's always something. Right, they're free, and a lot of folks say, well, you know, I want a high pressure shower. We actually do get higher pressure because we're limiting the amount of water that comes out, so I really like the shower heads. Now, it has to be one of the shower heads that's up top. It can't be a handheld. Right. It's got to be the one up top. But if you do have a handheld one and you want to save water in the shower, uh, just limit your shower time. Maybe challenge your family to see who can take the shortest shower. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have kids. That's a great, that's great. <laughs> that's a good way to do it, yeah. Okay. So we've talked about the kitchen. We've talked about the bathroom. Any more tips? Maybe laundry tips? Sure. So for the laundry, same thing with the dishwasher. You know, if you do run your, your laundry machine, your washing machine, you just want to make sure that it's completely full before you run a cycle. Okay. All right. Now it's winter time, but pretty soon 
I hope very, very soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be warming up, and we're going to be doing some stuff in the yard. Are there any areas outside that we can save water? Absolutely. Um, you know, we have a mandatory uh, ordinance for, for lawn watering. A lot of people don't know that. Right. And they try to break the rules. Yeah. So every single day, you, you cannot water between noon and 5 p.m. And really, that's to your benefit, because uh, at that time, the evaporation rate is so high that you're not going to get all the water that you're putting and paying to put on your lawn right. um, into your into your lawn. So don't water between noon and 5 p.m. at any time. Okay. Um, make sure to you know only water your lawn when it needs it. Uh, don't water your lawn when it's raining. Don't water your lawn. That kills um, me. Yeah. Oh. You see a lot because they have the timers. A lot of people have the timers. Right. But we also have rain sensor rebates too through the through the uh, utility billing office. So check online for that too. So if you want to make sure that you're not watering when it's raining, we do have rain sensors. You can apply for a rebate. Any other things I simply don't know? My gosh. Yeah, so there are other water conservation devices I want to quick mention. Okay. Um, we've got leak detection tablets for your toilet. Uh, a lot of people, you're not going to hear your toilet running, uh, but you could have a leak, and that can be causing your water bill to spike way up. Okay. Um, so you can pick up these tablets. You put them in your tank. Uh, they're blue. If you see the blue come out into the bowl, you know that you have a leak in your toilet, so you need to get that fixed, and you'll save money and water by doing that. Same pickup spot? Yep, same pickup spot. They also have, for in the summertime when it does get nice, they've got nice uh, hose nozzles you can screw right on, and that helps you control the flow of the water coming out of your hose. I need one of those. Yeah, those are really nice. Those, when it's drip, drip, drip. Yep. And I put a bucket under it yeah. last year before I got it fixed. It's amazing how much those drips add up. Right, it fills up really quickly. Yeah, yeah. and that's money that you have to pay for, yes. so it's nice to be able to control that a little bit better. Well, my gosh. I'm learning along with everybody else. Well, good. That's awesome. Jessica, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. My hero is my neighbor because she rakes the lawn for me when I can't. She's always there whenever anyone needs a helping hand. My teacher is my hero because she always makes time for everyone. Sioux Falls Parks and Recreation has part-time positions available to supervise our open gym programs. Flexible schedules, afternoon, evening, and weekend opportunities are available. Apply online today. Great jobs, great experiences. To find your job, go to SiouxFalls.org slash parks dash jobs. Welcome back, everybody. Did you know that February is American Heart Month and how just a few simple changes can really improve your lifestyle? Hi, welcome to City Scene. I'm Mary Michaels with Live Well Sioux Falls. And with me today is Chrissy Meyer from the American Heart Association in South Dakota. And we're talking about Heart Month because obviously February is American Heart Month. So Chrissy, is it true, is cardiovascular disease still the number one killer of men and women in our country? Unfortunately, yes. Um, like I always say, the American Heart Association, we're in the business of ending heart disease and stroke, but unfortunately, business is still really good. In fact, uh, what we know is that approximately one in three women will die of cardiovascular diseases and stroke. That amounts to one woman about every 80 seconds. So in the course of a half hour TV program, we're losing about 22 women, which is stunning. But the good news is that heart disease is 80% preventable. So with simple lifestyle changes, with simple things that you can do in your life, you really can control your risk. Yeah, I think you know Heart Month comes at a good time because we've just crossed over into the new year. People yeah. are thinking about maybe some resolutions or how they can make 2018 a little healthier. Yeah. It can seem daunting though yes. when you're talking about lifestyle change. So yes. tell me a little bit about how the Heart Association teaches people to look at their lifestyle changes and how to make it a little more simple. Yeah, well we know that there are certain things that you can control and certain things that you can't control. You can't control your age, can't control your family history, but you can be aware of those things. So go and have a conversation with your doctor, understand what those risk factors are that you cannot change. But then the other important thing is to understand what risk factors you can change. And those are things like your blood pressure, your uh, blood cholesterol, your blood sugar, your body mass index, which is kind of a measure of 
how um, overweight or underweight you might be. Um, just understanding those key numbers is a really important thing to do. And once you know those numbers, you can create an action plan to decide how you're gonna tackle that through lifestyle changes. So for example, if you have that conversation with your doctor and you discover that your blood pressure is a little high, just by getting that blood pressure under control, either through a diet change, maybe reducing sodium, eating more fruits and vegetables, getting more physically active, maybe it's appropriate to be on medication, maybe not. But if you can get that blood pressure number under control, we know that you can drastically reduce your risk for heart disease. So it's those simple things, but it all starts with a conversation with your healthcare provider. And a lot of those lifestyle changes, so just maybe saying, okay, I'm gonna to start to add one extra fruit or vegetable to my plate at each meal, or I'm gonna get out for 10 extra minutes today, and then maybe next week it's 15 minutes. Those just physical activity and nutrition can have a big impact on a lot of those different numbers that you talked about. Absolutely, and that's really the bottom line, is that we know we need to eat better, we know we need to move more, but, but why? What does that mean? And really what it means is that it just translates into overall better well-being for right. your body. Right. So during Heart Month, remember to find those simple ways to boost your heart health, talk to your friends and neighbors, talk to your doctor, think about ways that you might be able to help our community be healthier, and certainly check out the resources available at livewellsuitfalls.org and at heart.org. Yeah. Well, Christy, thanks for being here. Thank you. And we wish you all a happy, healthy Heart Month. You know, there's more going on in our Sioux Falls libraries than we know. Let's hear about all the different ways we can stay informed. Welcome to the library, everybody. I'm Dan Neves, and today I'm at the Downtown Library with Library Marketing Coordinator, Betsy Rice. Hello. Welcome. I look like a librarian of the shushing kind, but I am not. Ah, yes. What I am is someone who can tell you all about what's going on at Siouxland Libraries. So. You know, yes. just like the shushing librarian mm -hmm. with your glasses, mm -hmm. 50, 100 years ago, we were a shushing library with nothing but books, right? That is correct. Well, we're not that anymore. We've got not tons of stuff going on. We do. The mission's the same. Correct. But how do people find out what we're doing? Well, we have something that's very new that we'd like to share with people. It's called Highlights at Siouxland Libraries. It is a monthly newsletter, electronic, you have to subscribe to it, and in a minute I will tell you how to subscribe to it. But it lists some of the outstanding events each month, not all of them. If you want all of them, you can go to our website, www.sulandlib.org, and click on events, and you can see everything. So, so Betsy, you mentioned, you mentioned that this is Highlights Magazine. Or, uh, so what are we highlighting? Is it events only? We are highlighting events, yes, you're right, but we're also highlighting services that Siouxland Libraries offers. For instance, we are offering commuter classes for adults, and that's in response to popular demand. It turns out everyone doesn't know everything, and the world of computers changes anyhow. We have an Oscar film series at the Cayley Branch Library showing some of the nominated films. We have craft classes. We have three musical appearances, one by the uh, two, two men from the South Dakota Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, we are doing a bluegrass defined, discussed, and demonstrated class. Um, we also have a music therapist coming, and this is all in conjunction with our Siouxland Library winter reading program, which is called Libraries Rock and Dan libraries do rock there is no question so that's a lot of information you can find in highlights which comes out monthly monthly and subscribe through our website subscribe by going to a search engine whether that's google yahoo whatever whatever uh, search Siouxland libraries sign up to find out the big things that are going on the big services we offer and these fancy guys you can find on our website as well siouxlandlib.org or stop by any location to pick these off the table Absolutely. Follow us on and social this media. is everything that's going on every month. Yeah, There's this a is a comprehensive list. This is overwhelming sometimes because we're doing a lot of stuff. We are indeed. But we have something for everybody. We do. No right. question. So if you want to find out more, visit us online, siouxlandlib.org. Give us a call, 367-8720, or stop by any Siouxland Library's location. We can tell you what's happening and what you should go to. 2018 is the year of the park. Jackie Nelson is going to explain all about 80 and 18.
is Jackie Nelson. I'm the administrative manager for the Sioux Falls Park and Rec Department, and we're here to talk about 80 and 18. 80 and 18 is our challenge to the citizens and visitors of Sioux Falls in regard to getting to 80 parks in Sioux Falls over the course of 2018. So we'd like, again, citizens and visitors to visit all 80 parks, take a picture of themselves with a landmark, similar to what's behind me with the ice rink, and then take that picture and uh, post it on Twitter or Facebook from a social media platform. Or if you're not a social media follower or fan, you can also print off a form at SiouxFalls.org 1818 and you can drop off the printed form with your pictures to the, to the Sioux Falls Park and Recreation Office. We are doing this for fun and to get people to explore Sioux Falls and to learn more about the parks and the history that goes behind each of the parks throughout Sioux Falls. We want people outside exploring their parks, sharing what they're learning and seeing with their friends and families and just really making memories as they move forward throughout 2018 into you know the next generations with their families. We are at Sherman Park and with me is Diane Gildemaster. She's the District Park Supervisor for Sherman and she's going to let us know a little bit more about what we can do in February at Sherman Park. Sherman is one of the more popular ice rinks. Um, we've got the hockey pen behind me here and um, that's pretty popular and then just just that it's kind of in central part of town um, really a nice rink with some protection of the trees from the wind and so really fun to be at. The softball fields work really well for some winter kickball if you're interested. Um, there's some little bit of sledding hills up in the upper part of Sherman as well. Definitely come and use the park, it's great. Hey, did you check out Dino Roars the last time it was at the Great Plains Zoo? If you missed it, there's another chance to check it out. Hello, my name is Dan Simon. I'm Vice President of Operations at the Great Plains Zoo and Delbridge Museum of Natural History. And we're here today to talk about our new traveling exhibit called Dino Roars. With Dino Roars, our great room in the Delbridge Museum gets transformed into a prehistoric jungle with 19 animatronic dinosaurs that move and swish their tails and roar. Um, very interactive and very fun for both kids and families. Dino Roars has always been a very popular exhibit for us, uh, very popular with kids. Um, kids and dinosaurs is always a winning combination. Uh, they're coming in, they're exploring, they're able to not only see the dinosaurs, but we have a lot of nice little interactive exhibits as well where kids can dig in uh, for fossils in the, uh, in the sand pits. Uh, they can compare texture of skin of dinosaurs with some modern day animals like alligators and snakes. Uh, they might also explore comparisons with uh, uh, predator-prey relationships. So always a good learning and entertaining experience for kids. This exhibit ties in with uh, bringing, bringing families into the zoo, learning about animals and their interactions with the natural world. Of course, they have access to the Delbridge Museum, which has a lot more of that con content regarding animals. And then uh, really making it a year-round attraction for Sioux Falls. Uh, our kids clinic is open. Kids can come in and pretend they're a veterinarian, have a lot of interactive and learning opportunities in that area. And then of course get out into the zoo. There's a lot of warm-up areas throughout the zoo where they can go look at our animals, get warmed up, and move to the next spot. So really year-round attraction um, for the community of Sioux Falls and the surrounding areas. The Dino Roars exhibit will be here in the Great Room at the Great Plains Zoo uh, until April 15th. Um, there's a three dollar admission charge that's in addition to zoo admission and uh, if you're a regular zoo goer you can for twenty eight dollars you can add a dino membership and so it gives you unlimited access throughout the uh, the run of dinos here to the exhibit well everyone thanks for joining me for this month's city scene if you missed any of it or you want to see it again check us out on siouxfalls.org or on youtube i'll see you next month